This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Well, Tesla is in the news today. First up, it officially launched the refreshed version of the Model 3. Some of the updates for 2021 include new wheels, a new center console, powered trunk, and efficiency improvements that boost the range for all versions of the Model 3. In fact, all models in Tesla's lineup are getting increased range through an over-the-air software update. Tesla says the update improves the efficiency of the motors and climate control system, which boosts the range. Tesla ended its no-questions-asked seven-day return policy. If there was no damage to the vehicle and it had less than 1,000 miles, you could return the vehicle for a full refund. Electric reports that customers will now be referred to Tesla's service department if they want to return a vehicle. Tesla didn't reveal why it ended the policy, but no doubt it was expensive. And Reuters reports that Tesla is going to start exporting Chinese-made Model 3s to Europe. That's a curious move and makes us wonder if it could be running into problems selling cars in China. Tesla's Gigafactory in Shanghai can make about 18,000 cars a month, but it's only selling a little over 11,000 a month in China. So it will export Model 3s to 10 different countries in Europe. Here's our AutoLine Insight. Tesla will not export any Chinese-made cars to the U.S., That's because the U.S. now hits any Chinese-made car with a 27.5% import tax. Europe has a 10% import tax. Quality issues at Hyundai and Kia are costing the automakers big time. The group said it has to pay out over $2.9 billion related to problems with its Theta-2 GDI engines, which resulted in the recall of nearly 1.7 million vehicles. And this is not even the first payout due to the issue. Reuters reports the total now stands at almost $5 billion. The impact of the cost will be reflected in the automaker's third quarter earnings. Spanish automaker Seat is following the trend of converting vehicles into plug-in hybrids. This is the Leon e-hybrid, which pairs an 85-kilowatt electric motor and a 13-kilowatt-hour battery pack with the car's gasoline engine. Together, they combine for 205 horsepower and provide up to 64 kilometers, or roughly 40 miles, of all-electric range. With so many PHEVs entering the European market recently, that segment is up by 134% in the second quarter of this year, according to the European Automobile Manufacturers Association. The world is changing at an ever-increasing pace. No matter what the mode of transportation, there is always the need for an efficient propulsion system. And that's exactly what Borg Warner has been doing since the earliest days of the automotive industry. We want to know What drives your testing? OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Looks like the public could be ready for AVs. The University of Michigan operated autonomous shuttles on planned routes and with a safety driver. They provided rides to 6,000 passengers, and according to a new study, 86% of those surveyed said they trusted the shuttles. Interestingly, the survey also included pedestrians, bicyclists, and drivers who did not ride in the shuttles. And yet 66% of them said they trusted autonomous technology. But there is room for improvement. Passengers said the shuttles are slow and are too cautious at intersections. Back in September, we reported that VW's truck unit, Tratton, had increased its bid to buy out truck maker Navistar. But Navistar rejected the $43 per share offer because it said it undervalued the company. Then last week, Wednesday, Tratton said its bid would expire by Friday if it was not accepted. Well, it looks like the folks at Navistar called their bluff. Tratton again announced it's increasing its deal to $44.50 per share, which translates to about $3.7 billion for the shares it already doesn't own. Tratton currently controls a nearly 17% stake in Navistar. Tratton says Navistar has agreed to the new deal, pending a review. Jaguar Land Rover's new CEO, Terry Ballore, 
is taking an axe to his product lineup. The Sunday Times reports that six current and planned models could be dropped, including the upcoming electric version of the Jaguar XJ. Also at risk are the XE and XF sedans and the Land Rover Discovery Sport. Under former CEO Ralph Spett, the company expanded the lineup in hopes to sell a million vehicles a year. But its sales slumped in China and the U.S.-China trade war resulted in big losses and job cuts. Jaguar does not have the means to support such a big lineup, so it's going to get rid of models as a way to boost its profits. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires. Your journey, our passion. Intrepid Control Systems. Over-the-air engineering. Boost your game. And by Borg Warner. Propulsion solutions that support a clean, energy-efficient world. The all-new Cadillac Escalade made its way through the Autoline garage last week, and all we can say is, is that it's a masterpiece of design, engineering, and manufacturing. There's so much to talk about, but we only have time to hit the highlights, so let's start with craftsmanship. And here's an example that really shows what we're talking about. The front end comes to a point in the center with a crease that runs vertically down from the hood, through the grill, the Cadillac crest, the front fascia, and the splitter. There's a lot of different parts to assemble, but they match up exactly. Inside the cabin is extremely detailed, with a dizzying combination of different parts on the doors, the instrument panel, and the center console. That kind of complexity can open the door for mistakes and misalignments. Instead, it was beautifully put together. While Cadillac raves about its 36 inches of OLED screens, and there's a lot to rave about, what really impressed us was the UX, the user interface for the infotainment system. It may be the best in the business. It was so intuitive to figure out and so easy to use that we never ran into what we call an RTFM problem, or read the effing manual. And we can rave about the AKG sound system, but hopefully you get a chance to hear it for yourself because words don't do it justice. Out on the road, the Escalade provides amazing isolation from the road. Same goes for wind noise. The ride is impressively smooth and quiet even when you're going over railroad crossings. Thanks to an air suspension system with magnetic ride control, which can even tame giant 22 inch wheels and tires. The only complaint we have is that the 6.2 liter V8 only delivered about 14 miles to the gallon. You can also select the 3 liter Duramax diesel for no extra charge, which ought to bump that up to 20 mpg. We drove a Platinum Escalade ESV four-wheel drive sport that was priced just a tick under $113,000. And that didn't include Super Cruise, which will add another 2,500 bucks. That is a lot of money, but Cadillac knows its Escalade customers and will probably sell everyone it can make. But that brings us to the end of today's show. Thanks for watching.